Got down to 31 degrees last night. And she lives. This thing actually gets up to speed pretty fast for a 7.3 this big. I don't know if that'll be today when you see this video or not, but May 13th is when this giveaway goes live. The best entry deal is going to be for the first week, and the giveaway is only four weeks long, not six weeks like the last two. So get in while you can. And uh, yeah, best of luck to you. Couple days later, we didn't end up doing anything with the tractor that day or anything. In fact, I already sold the tractor. My father-in-law was interested in it as well. And I was like, you know what? I'm really not gonna use it as much as he will. He's got nine acres that he mows at his place in his backyard. And I have like two and I can mow everything and have everything trimmed in under two hours. I really just don't need it. And all my ground is pretty smooth so I can run it off with a zero turn real quick. And like my Ohio property is my property that's closest to me. And that property has maybe a half acre that needs mowed weekly or every other week so it's really not much to worry about and then my Indiana property is right across the road from his essentially anyway so if I really needed to use it a couple times out of the summer to mow it's already right there anyway so I was like yeah yeah what the heck I'm like I I'm really not gonna use it that much I'd rather him just have it because he's gonna he's gonna use it like crazy anyways we no longer have the tractor but if you guys would like to see a tractor I could pick up another one I just in the moment I just I don't need one like for work use really so I mean, I'd like one, but in reality, like if I have to plant a food plot or clear out a small area once or twice a year, I have to do that. My dad's is like 30 minutes away. I don't really like need, need a tractor. I just kind of want one because it'd be cool, but I don't like need one. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things kind of like, I don't need to have trucks, but like I really like them. So I want one, so I buy one. You know, that type of deal. Same type of thing with the tractor, really. I gotta pick up some oil for the Cadillac. We're gonna be doing a service on this today. That's not the only thing the video is about, though. We're gonna be doing that on this today, though. And then we're going to get on back to the shop and see what the day brings. Since I'm sure you guys are so fascinated with the Escalade, we're gonna do a full service on the Escalade today. I'm gonna show you just how simple this is. It's a 6.2 liter V8 in this thing. A lot of power. Thing is awesome. For an SUV, I mean, it, it gets down, it gets dirty. First thing I'm gonna do though is open the drain plug down below, get it draining into the drain pan, then come up here and pop the oil fill cap off. And then we're gonna fill it back up. Then we're gonna change out the filter, fill it back up, all that good stuff. Take a 15 millimeter wrench, crack it loose. And once that's done draining, we'll pop off the oil filter. That way there's not as much pressure on that. We'll pop our oil filter off. Keep a towel handy, because once that's done, letting the overflow drip off, you're gonna wanna grab it with something like this to not get your hands coated in oil. New oil filter filled with oil. And it was not that tight on there. I loosened it by hand super easy. So I'm just gonna make sure it's snug, hand tight snug, to where I have to kind of break it loose with a little bit of force, but not much. Just gonna wipe all the extra oil off, make sure everything's clean, because if it's not clean, and you go to check to see if there's any kind of oil leaks or residue underneath here in a day or two, just to make sure you're not leaking a bunch of oil. It's gonna be hard to tell if you leave it all messy. All good. And now we wanna to try to get this right the first time, because adding a little more oil is not that hard. But having to take oil out can be very tricky. A simple way to do the math, other than being confusing, is this entire jug is five quarts, so all we gotta do is empty the rest of this into the oil fill, and then add three more quarts, which measurements are on the side of the container. All done, back it out. Well, we checked the oil level after running it for about 10 minutes and letting it sit for about five after being shut off. We got that all checked. No leaks, no ticks, no weird sounds. Everything's perfect. We reset the oil life setting so that it'll reset and go off at 10,000 miles again. It's that simple. It takes about 20 minutes if you're taking your time. So guys, let's make a small segment in this video about this truck 
and I know it's kind of dirty right now, like dirty as in like there's some little leaves and stuff that have fallen on it, but otherwise, I mean, the thing is awesome. It's super clean, but let's go and do a little bit more of kind of an overview of the truck and also what we're not changing, what we are changing. So for the most part, this truck is going to stay the way that it is, and some people will love that, some people will hate that. But for me personally, I just feel like you know, when you find certain trucks, certain trucks are better kept a certain style because they have a certain feel to them. They just have a certain look that's just like, it's like this timeless classic look that you just don't want to take away from it. And that's what we want to do with this truck. We did this with a couple of other trucks. Like one was a 55,000 mile first gen. We left it on old school bullet hole style wheels and tires. And it actually had 16 and a half inch weld wheels and we left it on those and we pretty much didn't touch it. And you know what? That was one of our most successful giveaways in terms of sales ever. And it was a truck that we didn't touch because people liked that truck being left the way that it was. It was an 89, 12 valve, five speed, 55,000 miles. It was an awesome truck and we didn't do anything but put brand new tires on the weld wheels and that was it and people loved it. Now we may still be picking up two more trucks in the next week here. One's gonna be a big time project and then the other one's gonna be another one that we don't do a lot to but we will do some tasteful upgrades to it as well. Let's get into this one, what we're gonna do and what we're not. First thing we're gonna do is tent. And this is the first thing on the list, I mean. It might not be in this exact order, but these are the things that we are gonna do. Tint is on the list of things to do on the truck. I cannot wait until we move away from a busy road. Upgrade number two is gonna be an exhaust tip for the axle dump because there's currently none on there and it's such a super minor change that'll kind of help with the appearance. And it's gonna be a four inch to eight inch axle dump, but it's gonna be hidden, of course, under the bed. So you're not really gonna see it that much. You might be able to see it from behind, but for the most part, that's all. Other than that, I don't think there's gonna be any other changes in terms of cosmetic appearance. That's what we're going for is to keep it simple, keep it cool. The tires are in awesome shape. I mean, the tread is probably, I wanna say 90%. I mean, they look brand freaking new. They're, they're Mickey Thompson's. Um, they're in great freaking shape. The wheels look good on it, I love it. Uh, we're gonna keep the amber lighting. Here's why. These are brand new. And so they're not all foggy, they're not all nasty, they're not like old, foggy, gross looking OEM headlights and cab lights and tail lights. They're all, they all look like they're either brand new or they were just super meticulously maintained. To me, they look like they're brand new swapped out with OEM ones that are in perfect shape because they look awesome. And based on the feedback that I got, there was a lot of people that were like, yeah, swap it out with clears, but there was a lot more people that said that the amber looked good on this truck because of how clean everything else was and the wheel and tire setup and everything else, they're like, it just looks good. Now, if we were to do like deep dish wheels and low pro tires and all that stuff, clear and LED would fit it a little bit better. But with this style, most people were drawn towards the idea of keeping it the way that it was. And so that's pretty much it for the cosmetic stuff in terms of what will change, what won't. For the most part, the truck's not gonna change other than tint and the exhaust tip. And that's why I bought this truck. I liked the way that it was, and I thought this was gonna be another one of those that we just kinda of buy and it's ready to go other than a couple small tasteful things. And it's just gonna be an old school, cool, classic. Um, if it was bone stock, we would've put a small lift on it and changed the wheels and tires out to look just like this. So it was just a perk that it was already done because this is what we wanted to go for. Now one thing we might also do as well is add a tow package. We've got the dog and the cat here, but this truck only has a bumper ball and that's it. It's just something that you should have on a truck, um, especially a heavy duty diesel. I mean, I can understand a lot of the guys that buy the new gassers and stuff and they buy $70,000 Platinum F-150 and they never haul with it, not a big deal. But a tow package is still pretty much standard on all those anyways. But on something like this, you might not ever use it, but there's a good chance you're gonna want to at some point and not having hitch would just suck. Under the hood, we might be upgrading the intake setup and possibly doing the glow plugs on the truck and the glow plug wiring or relays. The truck, st it starts fine, but I know the difference between a truck that seems like it's having a little bit of a glow plug issue and a truck that's not. In this one, yes, it fires up, but even if you cycle the glow plugs, you let it sit and all that other stuff, it still just has like a little bit of a delay to the start. So like it'll crank a little bit and crank a little bit and crank a little bit and then fire. I just know the difference between a truck that's having some glow plug issues and one that's not, and it's not an oil pressure issue. There's no oil leaks. There's no nothing like that. It's not a fuel pressure issue. It's not leaking a bunch of fuel. I mean, the, I mean, the thing runs 
flawlessly going down the road. It doesn't get hot. Everything shifts great. Everything runs great. No weird knocks or ticks. Nothing. The only thing that it does is it hesitates starting even if you let the glow plug cycle. So I feel like it's got to be that issue because here's another thing. The previous owner told me this. They said they think it's glow plugs too because if you plug it in overnight, it doesn't have a single issue in the world starting in the morning. And I plugged it in the other night and I went to start it up the next morning and he was right, not a single issue starting. As soon as he touched the key, boom, fire right up. So that's probably the issue is just the glow plugs, which they're not that expensive. And although I have not done glow plugs on a 7.3 before, I have heard that they're very simple to do. There's tons of video tutorials on it and diagrams and stuff like that. So we shouldn't have any issues doing that ourselves. If we do, then we can just put the ones in that we can and we can still always take it to a shop if we need to or get a towed somewhere or just drive it somewhere if we really have to but i don't think we'll have to do that i'm pretty sure you know if we run the engine for a little bit we drive the truck around get it kind of warm get in here pop the valve covers off i think they should come out fine but you never know it might start fine right now but if somebody's gonna have this truck and it gets bitter cold out wherever you're from nobody likes a truck that doesn't start well in the winter or in the cold just in general so we want to make sure that that gets taken care of so you guys have a fully reliable vehicle and not just something that starts on a warm day so let me show you what i mean by the starting delay so it's already technically it says it's already cycled we'll give it a little bit more time because of course in, in a general sense that's mostly just a dummy light so we're gonna give it another second here. So let's try it a second time. See what I mean? And so I mean, it could be a couple of things. It could be the glow plugs. It could be just a couple of them, a few of them, half of them could be just not working right anymore. It could just be the glow plug wiring or the glow plug relays. I mean, those are the couple of options. I'm doubting it's anything else because it does start right up if it's plugged in and it does start right up if you cycle it a couple of times and try to start it one or two times and it, you know, it works just fine. And everything else runs good, oil pressure's good, fuel pressure, everything else is good. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's probably something like that, which is typical for these tracks over time. The glow plugs do need replaced, but that's just kind of a normal wear and tear service maintenance type thing so we're gonna get those swapped out and other than that she's good to go and now the truck does also have a tuner on it it says riffraff diesel performance I don't know if that's any good or not but the truck seems to run really well has plenty of power and get up and go and the shift points are great still and it just seems to accelerate very nicely so now we're gonna get on the road here show you how this thing runs we're gonna take it easy at first because it's still a little bit cool. It's only been running for about five minutes. But we're gonna take it on down the road and let you guys get a little bit of an idea of how this thing drives and handles and do what I can, the best that I can, given the fact that it's through a video and not a person. I don't know, probably eight inches with uh, 
with some big old 35 inch tires on it, I believe they are. Go. I did a zero to 60 trying to hold the camera and the phone and put a hand on the wheel. Kind of hard to do because <laughs> I can't really like lay into it because I'm worried about dropping the camera. So that one's at 24 seconds, but let's do another one over on this other road here. It's a little bit more level. It's not going uphill like that one was. And then on top of that, I'll be able to actually hold the stopwatch and take it. You're just going to have to trust me that I'm getting to 60 when I do this. So the first one was 24 seconds, but that was going kind of uphill and um, not not full throttle due to worrying about dropping my camera while driving so let's do this and we're gonna build a little bit of boost I didn't, again, I'm kind of nervous to have this thing completely pinned because it is it's such a big truck with this lift and these huge tires on it. And I don't know if these are 35s or like 37s. I really don't know. I haven't measured them. I should do that real quick. But that one was 19 seconds, almost 20, but not quite. We shaved off almost five seconds uh, with that one there. And again, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it revs up nicely. It launched pretty good for how big this truck is with just a tuner done. I'm guessing just a tuner. I really don't know if like injectors and a bunch of other stuff is done or not, but I mean, I mean that was that was pretty good for how big this truck is. Get this back over to the barn though. Those are the two runs with it. The one was 24 seconds and some change going uphill, holding the camera and the phone and the wheel, which is a pain in the butt. This one was on the level ground, mostly pinned at the beginning, kind of let out halfway through because I didn't want to rev it through the roof, but ended up being about 19 seconds. I don't know how much better it'll do than that as it sets, but I bet you with a nice flat road, properly built boost I bet you could get about I bet you could get I bet you could see 17 ish seconds in this thing I don't know what else done to it though in terms of power all I know is it's got a tuner on it and a big air filter but I don't know anything else about it I don't know if it's got you know bigger injectors I don't know if it's got a built trans a stock trans I, I have no idea I'm guessing it's mostly stock but you know that's just a guess I really don't know for sure okay we're gonna do the rear first sit at about 34 and a half inches might just be because it's compressed in the rear end a little bit I'm guessing they're technically 35s and it's 45 and three quarters of an inch to the fender in the rear to the front and in the front it's about 45 on the dot For my liking, the truck sits about perfect, about an inch higher in the rear than it is in the front, which is just about where I would want it for this style of truck on this setup. And another thing to note with this truck too, guys, the rear and front fuel tanks do work. I actually used it the other day. Uh, coming back from Illinois, we got almost all the way back, had about a quarter tank, flipped it to the rear, filled it right up to the top because of the rear tank being full which i knew it was full because i filled them both up just to be sure didn't have to stop for fuel i mean it wasn't a terribly far trip it was only 200 miles anyway everything works ac works ac's cold heat's hot um wipers work the blades are actually really good i mean all that stuff it's a it's a great, it's it's a great solid truck, which by the way, the giveaway for this truck is live. And right now, every $1 gets you 20 entries and that is the best entry multiplier of the entire giveaway. You can grab 20 entries for the first week. So if you wanna get in on this truck, every $1 is 20 entries to win, which is essentially every nickel is an entry, pretty sick. Um, we sell socks, we sell backpacks, we sell coats, we sell hoodies, we sell shirts, we sell hats, we sell 
I mean, cups and tumblers and koozies and decals and stickers and keychains and tons of stuff. And if there's something we don't sell that you would like to buy, I'm sure we may offer it at some point here very soon. We're trying to develop our store as much as we can. Reagan is on top of that. She's the one behind the store design work and adding the new products and all that stuff. She's pretty much like the backbone of everything that goes on behind the scenes that you don't see on camera. So if you guys could, show some love for Reagan in the comments. Say thank you, Reagan, for all the hard work you do because she does a lot of stuff for us. Like, you guys have no idea how much she does. It's unbelievable how much she gets done. So if you wanna get in on this, first week, get 20X entries. The giveaway just went live today. So if you wanna get in on this, Now's your chance. You could have a super minty, pristine 96 F250 7.3 Power Stroke plus $5,000 cash. Why wouldn't you want it? I mean, hey, you could buy a t-shirt and win that truck. I don't know about you, but it seems like a pretty good trade-off, especially since, you know, people buy clothes anyways, and I'm sure you've spent money on dumber things that didn't get you entries to win a truck, so why wouldn't you? Keep in mind, guys, placing the orders is how we can afford to pay for these trucks, to give these trucks away. If people don't place the orders, we can't do this for people. So just think about that. Anyways, guys, you guys are awesome. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.